Hey everyone, Felipe here. Welcome to another Tarot Saviors GNN review video. It's finally here, guys. We finally have news about the new collaboration, which is going to be the One Punch Man with Tower of Saviors collaboration. And I am really excited. I really love the anime and like the manga. And I am really excited to see how the characters from One Punch Man will translate their skills into Tower of Saviors. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's begin. Um, yeah, super excited about this collaboration. We do have uh, Professional Heroes, the series character, as well as Speed of Sound Sonic as a challenge mission. So from the get-go, I think we know that Sonic is not going to be in the pool of cards to pull from the seal. But I'm excited to see which characters they did add because I've tried my best to stay away from spoilers. Uh, so, of course, we're going to have Saitama, which is the main character from the anime. And he is going to be undoubtedly the 1% jackpot card this time. But yeah, uh, on October 3rd, after the maintenance, TOS will hold a new collaboration or crossover event with One Punch Man. Uh, 10 One Punch Man series will storm into the realms. Uh, ooh, exclusive black gold character. What? Interesting. Oh, so he is a black gold and other professional heroes like Tatsumaki as well as Genos. Uh, Genos um, will be a, they will be a, available for amelioration alongside um, at the start of the crossover event, which is pretty standard for newer collaboration cards now. If you weren't here in the beginning of the game, amelioration wasn't really added to crossover events because they never thought that okay, they will uh, be that powerful, things like that. So for example, Pili Puppets, they never had amelioration. And they did get amelioration the second time they returned. But nowadays they're running like more exclusive collaborations, I'm guessing harder to get contracts, things like that. So they released the amelioration from the get-go. Uh, so because animes, uh, contracts, things like that, I yeah, they always release amelioration uh, when the crossover event comes up. Which gives a nice stat boost to um, yeah, to the characters, which is pretty good. Exclusive black gold characters. Oh, I see. That's what you mean. Interesting. Okay, okay. So, yeah, so they're making Saitama a black gold character, which means that instead of 35 pulls, it is going to be a 40, uh, 40 drop pull. So, this is going to be 25 diamonds more than you would normally use to guarantee a 1% jackpot card. Isn't this? Uh, context, it's not really a 1% anymore, it is more like a blank gold character. So guaranteed every 40 draws, um, in this event Saitama will, yeah, will be guaranteed every 40 draws and you can get one Saitama hero costume when you first get the, your Saitama during the event period. So basically same mechanics as a normal black gold card, you do get the Dragonware when you obtain him and it takes 40 draws to get him. I am a little bit conflicted about the, this because normally crossover events are really are really good. They're really powerful and the fact that you could spend 35 pulls to get the 1% jackpot card made it really really good for newbies and stuff because you would get a lot of cards along the way and also have a really powerful jackpot card at the end. 40 pulls might not be too much uh, from... Yeah, I think the reason I'm conflicted is because 40 pulls is still a lot, but you do get a lot of the other characters, as well as higher chances of getting the other two jackpot cards, which I actually don't know if there are two jackpot cards now given the difference between the heroes now, or the the difference in draw machines uh, this time. So I think it's good. I think it will depend on the skills from the character. So actually, I realized it is a basically a blind review. So we don't know the skills, and I also don't know how long it's going to take. So let's just get going with the uh, characters now. So here are associated members. Ooh, Ooh, oh, nice. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, I thought I said ten. Ten characters. Like, 
right here. Oh, okay. So that's probably including Sonic as well as the ultimate stage and nightmare stage then. Maybe. Um But yeah. So we do have like <laughs> Moonman Rider, Tatsumaki, Tatsumaki Sisters King, so like Yeah. Uh but yeah, really excited. Let's see. Uh there is a trait, which is Hero Association, which is probably going to be like the oops, probably going to be the collab special, the team skill, the stat boost, and things like that. But yeah, let's get going with Saitama's leader skill, Light Human Member, um, with a leader skill of Team Attack times 10. Damage of Saitama will be dealt regardless of defense, and Hero Association members get an additional times 10 attack. HP and recovery times 3. What the? That's so much. Yo, okay. Uh. Uh. Here's. <laughs> I'm a little bit speechless because the meta right now, it's at times 7 with the occasional times 2 times 3 in it. So eventually you have like multipliers that are about like times 42 baseline for a good meta leader. Nowadays like times 8 uh, with a times 6. So yeah, We're, we are dealing with about like times 48 baseline with a single leader. Basically not counting leader and ally with some like other things, team skills and there, here and there. But baseline, the meta teams right now are like times 7 times 8. You're telling me now that Saitama is getting a baseline times 10, and if you're running Hero Association members, this is an additional times 10, which normally collaborations, you do want to run uh, members of that uh, collaboration crossover. So if you're running Mono Hero Association member team, you are going to get a times 100 baseline. This is without counting his team skills. So that is insane. Uh, granted, he doesn't have a lot going in his leader skill, but the stat stick or the stat boost that he's providing, that is so crazy. Because also HP and recovery times 3 is a lot. Normally, whenever you have an HP or recovery boost in your leader skill, it's like, what? 1.6, 1.8, 2 times max. Times 3 is a lot. Uh, you do get more from like more specialized leaders, like times 5 or times 8. But normally, if you have a really high attack, you have like a 1.6, 1.8 HP and recovery boost. But now you have both a really high attack as well as a times 3 HP and recovery boost on your team skill. And that is going to give you a lot of HP and make you very, very tanky. Uh, that being said, Saitama doesn't really lock you out of Hero Association members, or it doesn't lock you out of any other cards. So you are able to use any cards in the game in his team because he still benefits the time stand on them. But I think if you want to hit his maximum damage potential, you do want to run a Mono Hero Association team because they are the ones that get the most out of his stat boosting leader skill. Uh, but in case you need utility and things like that, you can always borrow cards from other series, and that should be okay. Uh, so now let's move on to his team skill. And because he is a black gold collaboration card, actually I should probably touch up on that. He is the first black gold collaboration card. So it is to be expected for him to be super incredibly busted, which is on brand because... Uh, Saitama is super OP in the anime as well. But yeah, given that this is the first collaboration black gold card and we are spending more diamonds, his skills better be super good to make it worth. So yeah, let's take a look at his team skill, which actually looks a little bit slower than, uh, I mean, looks a little bit shorter than I thought might be for Saitama. But yeah. Runestone will be not stopped when Electrify Rune is touched. Sticky and Burning will be nullified. Light Runes possess effect of all runes, and all runes possess the effect of Light Runes. Extend Runestone movement time regardlessly by 10 seconds. 
Turn the first 100 runestones touched while moving into enchanted runestones. In the last wave, attack bonus plus 100% for combos made. Once Naitama activates a s active skill combo count plus 100. By triggering and dissolving the character rune stuff of Saitama, all Saitama enter a hyper state for 3 rounds. If there is a Saitama in the team, Saitama will not enter a fatigue state. Oh, I like that. Yeah, 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 I like that. That's because Saitama's OP, he trains every day, he does 100 sit ups, 100, uh, I know, yeah, like. 100,000 sit ups every day, 100 squats, 100, like miles run every day um so he does not get tired which means that that's very nice he doesn't enter a fatigue state his team skill though i'm a little bit i mean it's good like yeah the fact that you can ignore sticky ignore electrified that's really good uh helps you spin without worrying uh but you're not ignoring other like i don't know other hazards like frozen, uh, laser trap, and things like that. Roots of possession effect always good. Uh, this means what this means right here is that you do want to run more light members than other root cells because yes, you are able to enable other attackers with light roots, but if you have light drought, uh, your other rainbow members are going to be be dead in the water. But you always have light rune attack available for you. So you do want to run more light members because this will allow you to launch attacks more often and launch more powerful attacks as well. Extending rune of movement time by 10 seconds, that's amazing. Uh, this is regardless, so you always have 15 seconds, uh, basically. And even if the enemy has a rune of movement time reduction, you still get a full 10 seconds, and that is plenty of time to spin whatever you want. 100 move, uh, runes those touched while moving into enchanted runes. This is probably a reference to him running 100 miles every day or 100 kilometers every day. Uh, this is nice because it allows you to not worry about enchanted shield or enchanted quintet shield, things like that. But also, it helps you get rid of uh, mask runes as well as lock for recovery and also weekend runes. So, this is pretty nice. But also, but not super broken. Uh, this one, it's nice, but it only triggers in the last wave. So, for all intents and purposes, it might be a little bit useless during a normal battle. Yes, you are going to have a better chance at killing the boss because this is going to be very, very, very powerful. Especially if you pair it up with this freaking skill right here, which gives you a hundred combos. Not EX combo, just like normal 100 combos that round. If you have an attack bonus plus 100% for each combo made, <laughs> that is going to be an insane amount of damage. Speaking of, this is like going to be super powerful. If you could spam his skills, this is going to give you a lot, a lot of damage. Um, and by dissolving character runes of Saitama, all Saitama enter a hyper state for 3 rounds. And yeah, that's pretty nice and all, but um, I do I have learned that hyper state is actually more useful than just boosting your attacks because uh, hyper state will give you the ability to avoid some debuffs that the enemy will put on you, so like fatigue state and things like that. But that also means that like it doesn't really mean much because Saitama will not enter a fatigue state. But what it does mean here. Is that you can continuously trigger Saitama's character runes every single round because he will not enter a fatigue state, which means you can spam his character runes every single round. And that honestly is not that bad, and it feels like it's going to be pretty fun. That being said, his team skill lacks a lot of utility, lacks a lot of shield breaking potential, which to me, it feels a little bit weird given that he is the one that will that is supposed to end everyone with one single punch. Uh, so for example, like if the enemy had fixed skill, yeah, just punch him. If he had initial shield, yeah, just punch him. If he has like, I don't know, stealth shield, just punch him. If you have like 
I don't know. Uh, yeah, if you have like full board or like a hundred percent damage reduction shield, yeah, just punch him. So it does feel a little bit weird that Saitama doesn't have any like ignore shields effects because in reality he would like just punch the daylights out of the enemy and then just kill them, right? Uh, so that is one of the things that I am really uh, uh, disappointed, really, about the team skill is that there's not really a there's not really a shield breaking utility built into it. I feel like a lot of meta teams right now they have to have at least one shield breaking potential here, uh, or at the very least some sort of gimmick that makes it really easy to kill enemies. Your gimmick basically is just. Your core gimmick is just basically this right here, and it doesn't really have much, and this is tied to your active skill. This is tied to having more than one Saitama in your team, and this is only triggers in the last wave. So for all intents and purposes, these are like more conditional, but your meat and potatoes basically, or your core gameplay doesn't really have a lot going on for you in terms of uh, leader and ally team skill. Meanwhile, like for example, Daji, you have like all these things where like you convert them into elf runes or like you ignore you ignore sticky, you ignore puzzle shield, you ignore fixed shield. Um, you will not be hypnotized. For example, Caesar, he increases his combo count regardlessly, also ignores fixed shield. Um, yeah, for example, uh, Wargreymon also ignores fixed shield. I do think that at a baseline, ignoring fixed shield is definitely a very good thing. Because... Yeah, like... Combo count plus 100% means nothing if you cannot deal damage to the enemy because of some like stupid shield. Like, I don't know, uh, you forgot to dissolve a plus sign, or you forgot to dissolve... Uh, or you forgot the enemy has initial shield, or you missed the fixed combo shield by one, this combo count plus 100 doesn't mean anything if the enemy is just going to reduce all your attacks to one. So it is a little bit disappointing that uh, Saitama is a little bit weak in terms of the team skill department. I did expect a little bit more, but maybe that will be better once we take a look at the active skill. Uh, but yeah, basically what Saitama is as a leader, he's just like a very high stat, very high damage output character, but you will be relying a lot on his active skills in order to deal the most damage and also to help you break enemy shields. Uh, but yeah, all in all, as a leader, he will deal a lot of damage. Baseline 100, if you're running Hero Association members, dual, dual leader and ally, that goes quite high and then you have uh well there's no more like damage output in the core gameplay uh, but at the last wave you are going to deal a shit ton of damage from like this attack bonus and this one if you have the ability to spam his active skill which i kind of just noticed that his skill is cd8 which is gonna make it a little bit harder to spam uh, at the very least, you still have leader and ally, which means you can um, you can activate two of them in close succession. Uh, but yeah, so this one's like pretty good. Uh, you can continuously be in hyper state because he doesn't enter fatigue state from character runes, so you can always trigger character runes. So basically, he's just like damage. Yeah, his leader skill is just pure damage. And for utility, you're going to have to rely on your active skills and team members. Uh, which, for a black gold card, it is a little bit disappointing. Uh, yeah. So, let's see. Oh, only one active skill to... Mm. Okay. Only one active skill. I was expecting him to have two. One, like... The normal series and one super series. Well, I guess his active skill is serious. Serious punch. Okay, so we have active skill, serious punch, skill level 10. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, so he follows like normal black gold card rules where um, you don't have to bring him all the way to skill level 12. So skill level 10, CD8. A bit long, but let's take a look. Remove all runestones to generate light runes. Okay, so you have like a full board of uh, light runes. For one round, character's attack time is 25. Okay, character that oh there we go. Character's damage will be dealt regardless of duo, trio, quartet, quint elemental shield. Nice. Puzzle shield, fixed combo shield, and runestone number shield. Nice. Okay, so this does fix a lot of his team skill problems because you are condensing a lot of these shield breaks into one single character, and that's pretty good. Um, don't get me wrong. And but yeah, so it is pretty good to have like so many shield breakings in his own active skill, and at times twenty five attack. That's just so much. <laughs> that's basically just gonna kill everything. And here's the thing though, like, this active skill is amazing as a member as well. It really works well with his kit because he doesn't have any shield breaks with him. But, I will say, times 25 self attack increase is the highest we've had in the game so far. And... If you've been playing the game uh, from the beginning, you know how valuable these like self-attack increasing cards were in the past. Nowadays less so because your leaders give you so much attack multiplier from leader skills that you are able to kill enemies with high defense no problem. But in the past there was an enemy that would only take damage if your single instance of damage was higher than 10 billion. And yeah, there's a lot of cards nowadays that can deal 10 billion no problem. Like, if all the cards attack. But this 10 billion is cumulative, and then each single member would be dealing like what? 70, 700 million, something like that. But none of them will reach like 10 billion by themselves. So what you had to do is you had to bring in a tech booster card, like Ed, uh, Mufasa, uh, Bastet, things like that, uh, Pupuro, that would increase their own attack so that you could surpass that... 10 billion mark and honestly Pupuro is just times 10 or like Mufasa is like I think times 12 or something like that uh, PR Ed is like 15 times 25 is amazing it's like it's, it's basically just a nuke and the fact that it comes with duo trio quartet quintet elemental shield ignore as well as puzzle shield ignore fixed combo shield ignore and runestone number shield ignore that is such a good active skill for any member in the future. So yeah, this active skill is insane. The only thing that I will say that it's kind of eh, is that one, it doesn't ignore initial shield, but the other thing is that it should have had an anti runestone shield ignore. Because if the enemy has a anti light rune shield, this active skill becomes useless. Uh, because all your runestones are Light runes. Well, not useless because you can activate the skill first, get the effects of ignoring the shields, and then activate something else to get rid of those light runes. But basically, if the enemy has anti light, uh, anti -light rune shield or light block, you are going to have to use another skill to get rid of your light runes because uh, you are generating a full board of light runes, which in normal circumstances, it is going to be pretty good because that's a full board of attacking runes. Uh, and that is going to be really good. In a Saitama team, this is also nice because your combo count is 100. So you have one big chunk, but you still get 100 combos. For other teams, that big chunk of light runes might just be enough. But if you need higher combos, you might need to use another uh, skill or things like that. But Holy crap, that is a very good skill. What the heck? Uh, yeah, that is a really, really good skill. CD8 is a little bit slow though, but based on the amount of things that it does, I think it is worth it. Um, 
And you also have a bonding seal that by dissolving the character runes in the first batch, your combo count increases by 3. That's actually not bad, especially because you are incentivized to do character runes for Saitama every time. Because you, you don't enter a fatigue state, so you are able to launch and benefit from your character runes every single round. Uh, oh, we do have a human uh, Saitama hero costume, which is an exclusive dragonware for him. Uh, humans only. Oh, interesting. It's not just for Saitama. Ooh, this might be good. Dragonware skill, extend rooms of movement time. Characters, attack times 1.6. Uh, basic value times 1.1. Uh, current skills, CDs of 6 humans minus 2 if craft. Okay, so it's not that great. Uh, yeah, not that great. Okay, it's just basically a stat boosting uh, Dragonware skill or Dragonware. So nice to have. You do get one for free. Um, you can craft it by using more Saitamas in the craft furnace, but I will get to that later. So what are my thoughts about Saitama? I think Saitama is a good leader. Uh, he does have a lot of attack multiplier and just lots of attack on attack on attack. So his attack is pretty high team attack times 10. If you're running hero associated members, this is a baseline 100. And that is one of the highest in the game so far. However, his team skill is going to be a little bit simple to say the least. You don't have that much of a gimmick. You do have a lot of stat boosting effects. Or not stat boosting even, more like quality of life effects like extending runes of movement time, ignore sticky, ignore burning, ignore electrify. You also have runestone possession effect which means that having attacking runes is not going to be an issue for you. Uh, but your meat and potatoes is a little bit conditional because this one only activates in the last wave. This one only activates when you activate your active skill which is at CD8 so it is not going to be that easy to spam it. And this is uh, triggered by character runestones, which sometimes if you have uh, light runestone drought, you might not be able to dissolve it. Or if you have traffic light runes, you are also not able to activate your uh, character runes. So this is also a little bit conditional to have. You don't have that much utility built up in your team skill. So you cannot just go brain dead and just spin to win. Uh, you do have to rely on your active skills as well as your team members uh, to get rid of those annoying enemy skills. For Saitama himself, his active skill is pretty good. It's actually really insane the amount of things that you can ignore. Uh, Duo, Trio, Quartet, Quintet is pretty nice. Puzzle Shield, Fixed Combo Shield, and Runestone Number Shield. Honestly, the one that might be the best is uh, Puzzle Shield because that is one of the most common shields in the game as well as Brunson Number Shield because sometimes it is very annoying to just have to do math in the middle of spinning. Just activate one skill, spin one combo, kill everything. That sounds very nice to me. Uh, but yeah, honestly his active skill is very nice because it condenses so many shields in one. The only downside is that it is CD8 and say you have a puzzle shield followed by a fixed combo shield followed by a number shield, you have to figure out where to activate your skill because at most, if you're running dual leader and ally, you can counter two of them. The third one, you might have to deal with it yourself. Uh, but also you do have a times 25 attack bonus increase, which is absolutely insane for uh, for any card, any not just Saitama, any card would love to have a times 25 and you do generate a bunch of attacking moves. So honestly, this is an amazing active skill. Uh, if it weren't for the fact that I don't know what the other skills are, I would highly recommend getting this as a member. Uh, as a leader, he might be really good, uh, but as a member, he is going to be amazing, especially for future leaders as well. Any future leader that can give you that you can use light humans is going to benefit a lot from having Saitama because we have reached a point in the game where enemies have so many skills 
that every single team slot is very valuable. And the fact if you can condense a lot of utility into a single card, that makes it a really good member. And Saitama is going to condense a lot of these shield breakers into one slot, which means you can bring other utility members or you now have the flexibility to run more attack boosting cards and that would allow like older members to maybe clear the stage better because you have more buffs in your team uh, but yeah so he is a really good member but if you're only pulling for him as a member 40 pulls that's a lot so let me take a look at the other skills to make sure whether i want to recommend him or not one of the other things I wanted to say though, is that it looks like Saitama does encourage a multiple Saitama playstyle um, because of all Saitama enter a hyper state and then damage of Saitama will be dealt regardless of defense. So it does seem that he does encourage you to run multiple Saitama. I will say though, I think at most you only want to run two uh, of your own Saitama. So leader and ally, that's two plus another one. So a total of three. And this is because you want to benefit from the extra Saitama attacks, but because his active skill and his team skill doesn't really ignore enemy shields uh, passively, you still want to leave some team slots open for the other members as well. Um, so honestly, like running 3 Saitama total might be good, 4 maybe, but I do think it is worth keeping your team slots open um, for other cards and more utility. That being said, if you are only, if you have limited resources, I do think leader and ally is enough. If you get lucky in the middle and get one more Saitama, I will say keep it and add him to your team and don't use them to craft the Dragonware because the Dragonware is actually not that great uh, to use a Saitama to craft it. So if you get an extra Saitama, just put it in your team and he's going to like deal a pretty good amount of damage if you have two Saitamas in the team. Um, yeah, so in terms of duplicates, I'd say keep one. Keep one duplicate, maybe keep two duplicates. After that, I think you can use them for dragon wares. But all in all, I do think his dragon wares a little bit eh, kind of weak. Um, yeah, in terms of like both craft skills and dragon wear skills. So, don't really recommend using Saitama to craft this dragon wear. Uh, but yeah, let's get let's keep moving on. Uh, we can see here my uh, I can see on my right scroll wheel that I have a lot of stuff to go through and I still need to pack. Oh well, let's go. So we have Genos, which is going to be a Fire Makina leader and oh, and that is actually really good because we haven't had a Makina leader in a while. Uh, so yeah, Hero Association members and Makina members, attack times 7, HP times 2. When 4 or more combos are made, team attack times 3.5. And where eight combos are made, team attack times two additionally. So see, this is what I was saying, where meta cards now they have a baseline times seven and then have something else going on. This is like a times seven, uh, this is a baseline times 49. So if you hit every single condition, it is a baseline times 49. Uh, Saitam is a baseline 100. So that is pretty crazy. Um, so Genos is going to incentivize you to run a Mono Makina or a Mono Hero Association member. But you do want to run more Makina members because of Makina dynamics, the fuel dynamic. Uh, so yeah, basically his leader skill is also just damage, HP times 2, no recovery. So that might be a little bit of a small issue, but maybe not too bad. So let's take a look at his team skill. This is a little bit longer, nice. Uh, for in both leader and ally are Genos, extend runes to movement time regardless by 2 seconds. Fire and light runes also possess- Ooh, that's cool! Okay, that's cool because like, you know, Master Disciple, uh, fire and light, Saitama's light, Genos is fire. This is kinda cute, nice. Burning will be nullified, which makes sense because he burns everything. 
Uh, so it makes sense for him to nullify burning. Every time a fire or heart rune is touched, recover. Okay, never mind. And then combo count plus one for every two combos made. Nice, nice. By dissolving fire runes, team attack times 3.5. By dissolving light runes, each member launches an extra fire attack. If no attack is launched by Genos in the round, skill CD of that Genos minus one. At the end of the round, fuel a Makina plus 5% and turn the bottom row into three fire rune stones and three light runes. Oh, okay. That's. This is nice. This is gonna be really fun. Uh. Yeah, one of the things with Saitama though is that normally when I look for collaboration cards, I always look for or like I'm really excited about new gimmicks and things like that. Because like um for example Wargreymon, the two columns, Omega Mon. Yeah, the two columns, and then like Angel Mon had like the guaranteed sky drop. Uh Metal Garurumon had like the two dissolve, which is actually really fun. Um uh, Genos has a very nice active skill. But Saitama is just basically damage, which actually, now that I'm saying it out loud, it makes sense. And it's very on brand for uh, Saitama to do this. Because in the anime and the manga, he's just very plain, uh, but he is very powerful. So it may, yeah, actually, Scratch, I'm not mad. I think that's good. I, I think that's really good because like he's plain, but his damage is insane. Which is basically this team skill right here. It's very plain, but his damage is insane. And his serious punch will just eliminate everything. See, I, if they had only also ignored equal combo shield, anti runestone shield, and like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, anti runestone shield, initial shield, things like that. It would be amazing. I think the reason Madhead did not do that is because it would just make it too OP and then like, you know, break the game. Uh, but yeah, back to Genos, I do think his team skill is going to be really fun. Oh no, I apologize, there is like a trash uh, truck outside my window right now. So, ooh, ooh, oh no. Uh, yes. Uh, but yeah, so I am going to get closer to the mic because I don't want it to pick up the really annoying sounds outside. Uh, but yeah, basically, this team skill is going to be quite amazing. Uh, extend the movement time, you also have Firelight Runestone Possession, and you have a guaranteed generation of both Fire and Light, which means that you can always benefit from these two skills right here, Team Attack times 3.5, as well as each member launches an extra Fire Attack. And this is going to deal a lot of damage because keep in mind, Genos is a Makina, and Makinas are always known for launching extra attacks as well, which means that you are going to be able to break the continuous uh, attack shield pretty easily uh, using this uh, team skill. Fuel and Makina plus 5% at the end of the round. Uh, it's pretty nice. I think Lilith has spoiled us a little bit where like your fuel from Makina goes to 100% from the get-go, but normal Makinas do have to spend some time accumulating fuel, and this uh, passive right here will make it a little bit easier for you to reach 100%, because you, as you know, Makinas do love to be at 100% fuel every single time, because you get an attack boost as well as launch extra attacks. Uh, so yeah, that's very nice. Uh, it is slower, but it is at least something that you can speed up your fuel uh, buildup. Combo count, very nice. It actually is going to help your leader skill a lot because getting more than eight combos might not be always possible. With this team skill, what this means is that you can get um, basically every two combos, you get one extra combo. So that's like, if you do four, that's six. If you do six, that's seven. Um, if you do six combos, that is going to be a seven. Oh wait, never mind. If you do six combo, that's a nine combo. Uh, so essentially what this means is that you only need to do a six combo in order to achieve your full leader uh, damage output, or your leader skill damage output. So honestly, six combos, and it's not first batch. Uh, six combos is really easy to hit every single round. 
So you are going to be getting the max multiply from your leader skill at all times, pretty easily in my opinion. And you might have noticed that I said that he has no recovery in his leader skill, but that's okay because you only need to touch fire or heart roost to recover your HP. And that's really fun, really easy, because it also goes through recovery reduction skills. And being able to recover HP without having to rely on recovery skills is going to be pretty amazing and really good in the current meta. Uh, and also helps that you have extra movement time because you can finish your movement and then just like basically spam a single fire room to recover all your HP. Um, and that's pretty, pretty cool. So honestly, Genos's active skill is really good. Uh, I mean, not active skill. Leader skill is good going to be really good and it does seem like it's going to be really fun it has like i don't know it reminds me of a shang yu play style no not shang yu even like this is the the bottom row thing reminds me of isanagi uh, which makes it really fun to play because you have attacking moves every round uh, things like that and you do generate a lot of i i just think this active skill or these team skill and leader skill that work so well together like all the effects complement like the playstyle which is really cool like it's amazing how well it works together like, you generate fire and light and then you also have an effect that benefits off of fire and light and it has fire and light uh, runes on possession and the combo count also makes it easier for you to hit your leader skill so it's very well designed in my opinion the one thing that I will say that lacks in this team skill, same thing with Saitama, is that you don't really have a lot of shield breaks in your team skill. And that's going to hurt a little bit. But I think Genos has a pretty fun leader skill and active skill. And honestly, if you're going for Saitama and you have 40 pulls, chances are you might get Genos along the way. So, you know, if you're going for Saitama, might as well get a Genos in the way. Uh, but yeah, in my opinion, pretty solid leader skill. You are lacking a lot on the shield breaking department and utility department. So you, again, same thing with Saitama, you are going to be relying on your team members as well as your active skill to deal more of the, most of this uh, ignoring shield stuff. Uh, so now let's take a look at his active skill. This is going to be a C6, uh, CD6 uh, active skill, which is nice. Pretty, pretty fast, pretty average and a lot of text so let's see sniper of 100 million to all enemies nice characters attack times five characters damage will be dealt regardless of puzzle shield enchanted shield defense and specific damage reducing resistance Ooh, that's good and at the end of the round hp will be replete, uh, depleted to one character enters a fatigue state for two rounds Yo, this is so good. Uh, yeah, wait, no, this is amazing. Granted, yeah, like a lot of your active skill will help kill stuff quickly. The the snipe snipers, you know. Uh, I have a a little bit of a eh spot for snipers because no matter how much their snipe is. It never, it's never gonna matter because enemies have so much HP that 100 million is nothing to them. The only thing snipers are good for is to get rid of stealth shield nowadays. Uh, maybe Lilith is good. Maybe snipers are kind of good at joint operation because their HPs are lower. But in normal nightmare stage, ultimate stages, 100 million is nothing. So, you know, uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you have a stealth shield, you can break it. CD6 sniper is actually not that bad. Honestly, it might be even good to have a sniper on your team that has other stuff in it. Because yes, we have CD1 snipers in the game, but like I said before, now, now that the game requires so many things in one team skill, every single slot is very valuable and I don't think running a CD1 sniper 
that can only snipe is that valuable anymore because it might be better for you to bring a higher CD sniper that can do more things like Genos here for example it can ignore a lot of other shields uh, characters attack times 5 characters damage will be dealt regardless of puzzle shield enchanted basically that's very nice especially because I was just saying that his team skill lacks the utility to break shields uh, so that is going to be actually kind of nice to have as well as having your self attack boosting skill and honestly this is also a skill that's going to be really good uh, as a member because again you are consolidating a lot of shield breaks into one single character which is going to make it good for any Makina teams in the future that want to ignore puzzle shield, ignore enchanted shield, ignore defense and ignore the, uh, damage reducing resistance. That being said, he, you don't really have to go for him as a member if you have Pompey because Pompey also ignores puzzle shield, he ignores initial shield and also generates a full board of enchanted runes so it will also help ignore enchanted shield. Um, but yeah, but all in all, he is going to have a pretty good active skill. If you don't have Pompey, you don't need him as a member. But his active skill does uh, synergize really well with his leader skill and team skill. And honestly, this part right here, even the HP depleter to one, it is going to be a little bit dicey if like you have a step damage on the next round or something. But given that Genos can recover HP by just moving. Uh, that's not that much of an issue, honestly. Uh, and the fatigue state, yes, it is going to be a little bit of a, of a detriment because Genos is not going to be able to attack. But keep in mind that if Genos doesn't launch an attack, his skill cooldown goes down by one. Effectively, what this means is that this skill is basically a CD4 skill because you activate it and you are not attacking for two rounds which means that your cooldown is reduced by 2. Uh, so basically it is just a CD4 skill. And not even then, like you are going to be able to activate it. Uh, yeah, you're basically just going to be able to activate it uh, after 4 rounds instead of 6 because of his passive skill. Uh, and this passive skill, or this skill here right here, is not going to work that well in other teeth. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> it's not going to work that well on other teams because, yeah, that just means Genos is dead for two rounds and has no benefits. In a Genos team, he can still at least get a CD minus one, which is pretty nice to have. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty good active skill. He also has a bonding skill that if you have Saitama and dissolve a character runes, the character will launch one extra attack as much as 100% of his own attack. Uh, and because he will get fatigued after character rune, you do. I would recommend for you to use his character runes because that will help you enter a fatigue state, reduce your cooldown by one, and then allow you to charge up your skill even faster. So yeah, all in all, I think Genos is a pretty good leader skill or leader uh, card. Um, he has good multiplier. He has like. A fun playstyle, honestly. I do think his playstyle is going to be kind of fun. Um, and has a pretty good active skill. Uh, you are going to be relying a lot on your members for more utility. For example, like initial shield. Uh, I don't know. Nah, equal number shield, things like that. Uh, but if you have Saitama, that is going to be pretty good. Uh, and we'll have to see what other hero association member cards come up so let's keep going on to tatsumaki which is i think the the other jackpot card as well so hero association and earth members attack times eight hp and recovery times 1.5 by dissolving uh, earth or heart runes team attack times four damage will be dealt regardless of fixed combo shield if hp is full before the enemy's attack damage received in the round minus 50 percent this is also a really, really nice leader skill, what the heck? Uh, yeah, again, what I was saying, baseline here is uh, 32. But basically, a baseline of times 8 is kind of at the top of the meta right now. 
and HPM recovery times 1.5, and you are incentivized to run either Hero Association or Mono Earth. And this means you can borrow cards from the Earth attribute and still benefit from your full team skill. Uh, and then the fact that you can ignore fixed combo shield baseline without leader sk uh, team skill, that is just really good. <laughs> um, she might be the only one that has like an inbuilt enemy uh, skill ignore uh, counter. And that's only pretty nice. And then damage reduction if your HP is full. That's going to be a little bit more situational. It would be nice if you had like a full minus 50% damage reduction it built into her because that means if the enemy attacks twice only the first attack is reduced the second one will potentially kill you uh like for example Angemon, Angewomon they do have continuous damage reduction so even like continuous attacks are still reduced but this one is tied to your HP being full so once you take one attack your HP is not full anymore second attack will go full uh, and potentially kill you but yeah all in all, pretty solid baseline leader skill. Let's take a look at the team skill. Both leader and ally are Terrible Tornado. <laughs> terrible Tornado. I just call her Tatsumaki. Yeah, wait, what the... What happened to the <laughs> translation? I... I guess... I think they could have gone better with Tatsumaki. Anyways, uh, Terrible Tornado, both leader and ally are Tatsumaki. Um, yeah, basically Terrible Tornado and Hellish Blizzard, so I'm guessing this is Fuyuki. Um, skill CD minus 6 after entering the stage. Nice. Uh, makes sense because they're sisters. So, very nice attention to detail here. Extend runestone movement time by 4 seconds. All runestones possess the effect of Earth runes. Nice. Earth runes also possess the effect of runestones of hero association members, and the effect of earth and heart runes increases by 100%. Runes of movement time will not be stopped when a tornado <laughs> or electrified runestone is touched. By dissolving 12 runes team attack times 3, and by dissolving 20 or more runestones attack of Tatsumaki times 2 additionally. By dissolving a character rune at the end of the round, turn all runestones into Oh, 15 heart runes and 15 runestones of members attribute. Whole oh, wait. Huh? Yo, that's so good. Um, yeah. Are you sure she's not the 1% jackpot? Fudge crackers! Yo, oh my... This is cra- This team skill is so much better than the other two! <laughs> I mean, in terms of utility... <laughs> Dude, this is so good. I mean, it makes sense. She's one of the most powerful heroes in the Hero Association, but you know... Wow, okay, 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 let's unpack this real quick. Skill CD minus 6, very nice for her and her sister. That's nice. Very good for like canon. Roots of movement time 4 seconds, regardlessly, very nice as well. Uh, all rune souls possess the effect of earth runes, which is also really good because you are incentivized in running a mono earth team or hero association team. Uh, but you also have the ability to power up. Uh, Power your hero association attacks using earth runes because there's also a runes of possession effect. It's also good because the effect of earth runes and heart runes is increased by 100%, which means that everyone in your team will benefit from it. Even if you run mono earth, they benefit from the effect increase. And even if they're hero association members of another attribute, earth runes have 100% increased effectiveness. But Earth runes also possess the effect of other members' attributes for Hero Association. So that's good. If you dissolve 12 runes, team attack increases by 3 times. Very nice. That is only like a 4 combo, 
which is pretty nice to hit, pretty easy to hit in my opinion. So that increases your attack, your entire team's attack by three times, which is very beneficial. Um, more attack is always good. And if you dissolve 20 or more runestones, this is seven combos, which is a little bit more challenging, but it's also not that hard to hit consistently. Tatsumaki increases by two times additionally. And honestly, this is not imperative for you to hit because this is a single member benefiting from it. Oh, leader and ally benefiting from it. So your entire team is not suffering. You might lose a little bit of attack damage, but um, it's not as bad as not proccing uh, this third one. This one though... This one... This one right here is very nice. So here's the thing. It is very nice because it will allow you to basically spin easily and spin very dumbly because you are guaranteeing um, a fixed board of 15 runestones of heart and 15 runestones of the member's attribute. I don't think it's fixed, so I don't think it's gonna be like 15-15, it might just be like jumbled up. But that's going to make it easy to spin and also give you a lot of attacking runes. Um, I think the intended synergy is going to use this character runestone thing with an earth member so that you can generate heart and earth runes every round and because these are the ones that have increased effectiveness and also the ones that have runestone possession effect for all your other members, it might be good for you to generate that uh, with earth members. And this means that you can recur, there's recursion because since you only have heart and earth runes, you can use another earth character rune to dissolve it with one of those earth runes already on the board to guarantee another 15-15 board the next round. That being said, the one bad downside out of this is that if you need to break Quintet Shield, Quartet Duo, Duo Trio, Quartet or Quintet, you are a little bit dead in the water because you only have Heart and Earth runes. The other unfortunate thing too is that it is going to make it hard for you to switch attributes because say for example your entire board is heart and earth how do you dissolve a water attribute character rune you can't really uh, so you have to use an active skill or just not do that and then things and you might be asking why would you want to dissolve a water character rune if most of your team is going to be earth members and my answer to that is now that madhead has been adding more of the number shields so you have to dissolve 30 light runes before you can attack, 50 light runes if you want to attack. So if you do this, you can generate 15 runes of that attribute really easy without having to rely on active skills or just basically sky drop uh, luck. So it's good and then it's not that bad for earth members because all the runestones possess the effect of earth runes right here. So even if you do that, uh, that is going to be pretty good. And then we have a... Ooh! Tatsumaki and Fuyuki have like a attack boost of 1.8, which is really nice. And their skill cooldown goes down by 1. And this is not staged, this is just... This is a permanent uh, skill cooldown decrease. So that's going to be really, really nice. Uh, but yeah, so next we have her... Or before we move over to her active skill. Yeah, this is really a really really good leader card uh good damage uh some damage reduction and also fixed combo shield ignore so all in all he has more enemy shield counters or shield breaks than the other two which is pretty nice and she also has like a pretty nice um team skill right here with decent runestone possession effect extra runestone movement time and like extra attack multipliers. You also ignore Tornado and Electrify Runes and I chuckled a little bit when I say Tornado because it would be kind of tragic if Terrible Tornado didn't 
ignore tornado but yeah let's just call her tatsumaki man it would be tragic if she didn't ignore tornado uh but yeah overall i do think she is a really really good leader uh has a good utility um but still will need to rely on your active skill and your members to deal with enemy skills which seems to be a recurring theme on this series i mean it's kind of good that it's consistent but i do think meta teams nowadays have a lot of stuff going on in their team skills or you know what maybe we're spoiled maybe but we'll see active skill cd7 oh okay yeah so skill cd6 after entering the stage you are off by one but if you have fuyuki and tatsumaki in the team uh skill cd minus one so it becomes cd6 it's ready from the get-go that is a giant paragraph Ooh, okay release the log skills of hero oh nice so release the log skills of hero association members Skill will be unlocked for two rounds. Time tunnel. Okay. Turn runestone torch into enchanted runes. Hero association members will be dealt regardless of equal combo shield. For every group of runestone dissolved in the first batch, character launches two extra attributive attacks, each for fire and earth, and one non attributive attack. As much as 50% of its own attack. To the max of 30 attacks for 10. Oh my god. Wow, okay. Um, yeah. I mean. Yeah, it's. I can't, this is just a good skill. I mean, this is amazing. I mean, every series has to have a, a locker. Uh, nowadays because locking your skills is kind of uh, annoying especially if the enemy can also lock your attacks so not even can you not activate your active skills but you can also not launch any attacks so it becomes really necessary for you to unlock your skills so that you can launch attacks so it is very good for a card to have or a series to have an unlocker because sometimes that can save you from dying or from having to spend longer in a stage basically so the fact that tatsumaki can ignore or can release skills is actually going to be really good time tunnel always welcome in my book um, it is one of the more powerful skills in the game because you can basically just build the board however you want you can ignore sticky you can ignore burning step damage is less bad uh, you can stack runes, you can get your puzzle shields good, you can do equal combo shields. Uh, nowadays, you can like do the plus signs easier and then stack your board so that you actually don't have shit damage. Uh, so yeah, time tunnel for two rounds. Uh, it's pretty good. And then you also have the Saitama effect thing where you can just like convert them into enchanted runes. And this ignores enchanted shield helps you with enchanted quintet or enchanted duo trio quartet quintet it helps getting rid of mask runes helps getting rid of uh lock for recovery uh, muck runes weekend runes um you're also ignoring equal combo shield which is pretty good especially if you have the 15 15 board up uh, you have extra attacks and this is going to be a lot of extra attacks because it's like 30 extra attacks for 10 groups of runestones. Realistically, you might not hit 10, but if you at least hit 7, you are still launching uh, 21 extra attacks, which is actually insane, especially against enemies that require you to deal many attacks. This is really good, especially since you can activate this skill from the get-go. And this is going to be... Uh, Pretty, pretty cool, pretty amazing. Uh, I guess one of the things that you don't have is combo increase, but I just slightly peeked at her uh, bonding skill and you are already incentivized to use your character rules anyways 
and you do get a combo count plus two, which is not much, but it is something and can all save your it can save your butt in a pinch, honestly. But back to her active skill, this is a really good active skill. Especially for a like hero association card. Uh, time tunnel, amazing. And basically the equal combo shield one is also really big um, because it helps ignore equal combo shield. And as soon as I saw this, I thought this card will complement both a Genos team really good because he doesn't have equal combo shield and also a Saitama team because equal combo shield is one of the few shields he does not counter. So if you add Tatsumaki into a Saitama team, she is going to be really good as well. In terms of uh, member potential for our other teams, she is still going to be really good because two rounds of time tunnel is very valuable. But then the, the other things is going to be a little bit more situational because her skills are tailored for hero association. So for teams in the future, she might be the only hero association member in that team. So basically you're only releasing her own skill and she's the only one dealing damage regardless of equal combo shield, which might be enough given that you are launching more attacks. Uh, but yeah, if you're running her for damage, she does launch a lot of extra attacks. But if you're not, uh, if you're running her for just launching extra attacks to break extra attack shields, you might as well launch, uh, run Libra, which allows your entire team to launch extra attacks. And that is usually enough to break those types of shields. So honestly, as a member, I don't think Tatsumaki has... I mean, she is good as a member, but she's not like super broken. And she does have other uh, replacements in the game. If you don't have Libra, she might be a really good member to break high combo shield or high attack shields. As well as the time tunnel is really good. So honestly, not a bad card either. Oh, I, I, we're still not halfway done. Okay, let's speed this up a little bit. Otherwise, I'm going to stay here forever. Uh, Silver Fang, King, Hellish Blizzard, and Mumen Daida. Let's go. Cool. So these are going to be the non-jackpot cards, so we're going to move a little bit faster on them. Uh, we do have CD7, uh, Silver Fang. Ooh, that's a lot. Water Stream, Rock Smashing Fist. Um, but yeah. So we have, for one round, if Runestone Movement starts with either Water, Earth, or Light, the corresponding effect is going to be triggered. Uh, water. Character launches no attack, but damage... Oh, basically, yeah, Tumblr. Nice. Earth turns runestone's touch to the, the first runestone movement into water. Interesting. Light team attack times 1.8. Damage will be dealt regardless of defense. Honestly, <laughs> this is nice. By dissolving all present water, earth, or light runes in the first patch, skilled ski CD goes down by 1. Honestly, not a bad skill, but also... Not that good. And here's the thing why. Because it seems that one, it is very situational. Uh, honestly, the, the best effect here is going to be uh, the first one where you sacrifice your own attack to survive the hit. And that is a good member skill for any of the three leaders. Light might be good for a 1.8 attack boost, but I think uh, Genos already ignores defense with his uh, active skill and Saitama ignores defense literally through his leader skill. So, I don't know. A little bit less useful for these two. The defense break can help uh, Tatsumaki really well. But all in all, I do think his active skill is... a. Uh, just okay. Um, and the Earth one, a little bit, I don't know, it's it's hard. I think he, he will be a good member in the future. Like for any water uh, members, I think he is a really good member because he, again, he consolidates 
a lot of skills into one. So that means you only need to bring one skill and occupy one team slot for that. So I do think he's a really good member, but he is going to be a really good member for water teams because of the earth effect where you can turn the runestones touched into water. And that's really good if you want to generate enchanted water runes, which in our case, none of the three leaders really want that. I, they can benefit from it, but they, their primary attack is not water runes. Like, yes, Saitama can use water runes to attack, but he does prefer having light runes instead to power up, to basically power up the other teams, uh, members in the team. Tatsumaki, again, can use water runes to attack, but she does focus more on earth runes to attack. Genos, it's a fire light runestone possession, so there's no water. So Silver Fang is in a weird spot where his synergy with the other three jackpot cards, basically the leaders from this collaboration, is a little bit awkward, but I do believe he is going to be a really good member for future water teams. So definitely get one. Eh, CD7 is a little bit long, but I do think the role consolidation uh, is going to be very viable. Hey, next we have King, who is going to be a dark human uh, King Engine CD7, electrify all enemies for two rounds, skill CDs of Hero Association members minus one, skill CD of Saitama minus one additionally. For two rounds, the character's attack increases or decreases to zero, and team attack times 2.5. Damage will be dealt regardless of. Okay, get this card. <laughs> this card is only good if you go for Saitama. Uh, Electrifying is nice and all, but we have Tentomon, which can already electrify enemies at a shorter CD, I think. Actually, no, I think they're the same cooldown. But CD7 to electrify is not bad because enemies nowadays have like the electrify shield where if you're not electrified, you have additional debuffs or uh, board hazards and the enemy doesn't take as much damage. So electrifying status moves pretty good skill cooldown reduction also very good but the cooldown reduction only affects hero association members so future wise he isn't really going to be really useful for um for non-hero association teams but he does provide a team attack boost of 2.5 and damage dealt regardless of initial shield so for FX 5 and 6, he actually does work well in future teams as well. Um, so he does have a really good active skill. But the reason I said get this card is because 1. He reduces Saitama's skill by 2. Which, if you were if you were here when I was talking about Saitama, his skill is going to be his bread and butter basically because it's the noob that ignores everything. And it's just gonna deal so much damage. Uh, the only thing holding it back is that its cooldown is eight, and that's pretty slow. But you can reduce it two times with King's active skill, and you also ignore initial shield, which is one of the few shields that Saitama doesn't break. So not only you're reducing your Saitama skill, you're also giving him the ability to break through initial shield. And that is going to be so good for Saitama. So definitely King is a very powerful member to run in a Saitama team. Which is why definitely try to get him. Uh, with, but honestly, if we're, if we're honestly speaking, or speaking honestly, if you're going for Saitama, you are going to get so many of these non-jackpot cards anyways. So that's fine. Uh, next we have Fuyuki. Sniper damage of 10 million, uh, CD7, Hellstorm, um, yeah, 10 million damage snipe, alter enemy's attribute for water for one round, or for one round, runestones of the leader's attribute and heart runes can be dis dissolved singly or in groups of two. And if 
Oh. <sighs> okay, Fuyuki, Tatsumaki, and Hero Association Leader will deal damage regardless of anti runestone shield. Yo, this is. She is really, really, really good, actually. Both for a Genos Saitama team, but most importantly, a Tatsumaki team. Uh, picture this, right? Runestones of leader's attribute and heart runes can be dissolved singly or in groups of two. This one increases your... For Genos, you dissolve heart runes and fire runes singly, and that's going to be really good and also gives you a lot of combo, uh, which is pretty good as well. For Saitama, it's also really nice because you can dissolve a lot of runes. I, I guess for Saitama, she is a little bit less useful in the dissolving aspect because it's fine. but. Um, and his combo count is 100 anyways if you activate his active skill, so any dissolve singly doesn't really matter if you want to increase your combo, just activate your skill. But I think the reason he's really good for Saitama team is going to be this anti-runestone shield. Uh, we were talking about how yeah, Saitama has a really good active skill but generates a full light board, and if you have Fuyuki in the team, you can now dissolve that full light board even if the enemy has a anti-runestone shield. So this is really good, uh, but this one is especially good for a Tatsumaki team because now picture you have the 15-15 board that she creates with uh, Earth, uh, Hearts and Earth. You can basically have a very high combo, um, a very high combo going because you can potentially get 30 combos by dissolving the entire board singly. So she is going to work really well with Tatsumaki. And again, well, same team skill right here. Um, yeah, same team skill as I want for Tatsumaki. Basically, if you want to run a Tatsumaki team, you should definitely get a Fuyuki, a Hellish Blizzard uh, in your team because their synergy is insane and really good. Holy crap, that is so good. Okay. Yes, but honestly... Oh wait, where's Movement Rider? Give me Movement Rider, what, uh, Earth, Human, CD6. For one round, extend runes to movement time to 15 seconds. Turn them into Enchanted Human runes. Clear the negative state of Electrify, Weaken rune, and Petrify runes. Honestly... <laughs> yeah, we are dealing with all these S-class heroes. And then we have like the B-class Movement Rider. <laughs> it makes sense his active skill is not going to be as busted. I mean, it's a nice skill, but uh, yeah, it doesn't do much. So I feel like out of all collaboration cards, this one might be the weakest. And doesn't really have that much member potential uh, because there are other ways of getting rid of Petrified, Weekend, and Electrified runes. All of our leaders kind of ignore them or have ways to get rid of it. And you're also ignoring defense for most of them, so Petrify runes are not an issue uh, for for those teams. So yeah, Woman Rider, eh. Oh, we have Professional Heroes Series Exclusive Dragon Wars. Wait, huh? Okay. Uh, no, the reason I said huh? Is because Saitama, you have the Saitama costume, but now you also have a Saitama red glove. Oh well, interesting. That's very interesting. Uh, Saitama red gloves by dissolving. Okay, so basically, Xen uh, Roost of Movement Time, character's damage will be dealt regardless of defense, but you already deal damage regardless of defense. You know what? This might be good if you're running Saitama as a member in the future because. If your future leader skill doesn't have a break defense, Saitama can still break defense by equipping his Dragon Warp. Uh, by dissolving more than one light rune, characters attack times one additionally? Is that right? I mean, anything times one is the same. But yeah. Anyways. Uh, skill CDs of three random humans. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, cool. Um, you might be running this uh, 
on the Saitama team, I think if you're running Saitama as a leader, it might be better to equip him with this one, Saitama Hero Costume, because your craft skills are better. Uh, you get more cooldown, you get more uh, extra light damage, and the skills are kind of better. Uh, but yeah, this is still a pretty good Dragon War for running him as a member because you do get the defense break even if you're not running Saitama as a leader. Uh, Genos, uh, launching attacks, pretty nice. Um, okay, attack, attack. Nice. Oh, nice. Turn the odd columns into. Wait, this is a really good craft skill. So definitely get Genosis because. Conversion skills are usually pretty limited. Conversion craft skills are usually like turn one column into X number, turn two columns into X number, turn the runestone most in number to that. But this one will actually give you three columns of fire, three columns of light, and that is going to be pretty beneficial for you, honestly. So pretty nice. Uh, Tatsumaki's dress. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, anti-runestone shield first patch. Um, if you have her, um, yeah, basically just stats. Their craft skills are actually pretty nice, especially if they're if you're running them as leaders. Their craft skills are pretty good, so definitely get their dragon wear. This one less so because if you have Fuyuki in the team, you can still ignore anti-runestone shield with her active skill, anyways. So yeah, that's fine. Silver Fang's jumpsuit. Um, he, you're not running him as a leader, so don't. We're, we're not gonna focus on these. Basically, stat sticks. Nice. King's Kaming console. Same thing with these guys. We're not running him as a leader, so we don't have to worry about that. Runestone movement time. Oh, this is good. This is this is good. This is good. Um, because yeah, re reducing your cooldowns is always good. But specifically for King, the faster you can activate King, the faster you can reduce Saitama's skill. So basically, this also means that Saitama gets a minus two because you can activate King at CD5, and then Saitama at that point will be at CD3. You activate this, King reduces Saitama's cooldown by two as well. So you can activate Saitama faster. So this is good for King. Definitely get it. For Fuyuki, uh yeah just stats cool and for movement rider i don't think you're running movement rider uh but if you are stat boosting always good to have skill level of material same thing um time limiting event s rank a rank b rank c rank the hero test uh you can oh wait this is a uh, getting certain scores you can yeah, you can uh, get new medals. Cool, cool, cool. And then challenge mission, the strongest ninja, Sonic. Yeah, basically he is going to put up a challenge stage and then we can farm the card from there. And let's see if his skill is good. Exploding shooting can, well, uh, he is a dark human, which is actually very on brand. CD4, okay, that's pretty good. Uh, ninjas are fast. Speed of Sonic, Speed of Sound Sonic, fast skill. Actually, that makes sense. Tap a runestone to explode the adjacent runes. Oh, basically, a shuriken, just like throw a shuriken, kaboom. Generate enchanted dark runes, 100% damage. Uh, dealt to enemies will be stored for an extra attack to be launched at the round, regardless of attribute and defense. That might be good. So I think that regardless of attribute and defense actually goes through effects that it does go through certain enemy shields. So if you're able to, I mean, but it does rely on you dealing a shit ton of damage to your enemy in the first place. And you know what? It's a little bit awkward because yeah, CD4 is good. And you're exploding runestones, the explosion effect is just very simple. If anything, I don't think it's that good anyways. Because you're only exploding 5 runes in a very limited area. Which, it might help you 
situationally if you only need to explode one. But the second part, that's interesting because you are launching a follow-up you are launching a follow-up attack later but if you're already dealing a crap ton of damage to kill the enemy then why bother? like the only times I can really imagine this being good oh wait you know where this is really good? This is really good for tumbler enemies. Those that have 50% tumbler and a very annoying skill. I think one of the most recent ultimate stages had something like that where it was hard to hit the condition, but you had to hit it twice because it had 50% tumbler. Yo, okay, okay, this is good because you deal that damage and it doesn't receive any more damage. But then Sonic will launch a follow-up attack that is equal to that tumbler. So then you kill the enemy. Okay, if it works the way I'm thinking it should, this is going to be pretty good. <laughs> uh, the other situation that I was thinking is that if you barely miss the kill by this much, this can follow up and kill the enemy. Uh, so honestly, CD4, not bad. I guess the only bad thing is that I don't think he counts as hero association. So he is not going to benefit from a lot of the other team skills that the current crossover characters have. That being said, I do think he is going to be a really good member for teams coming in the future. So definitely get him because I think his active skill is very unique. And although it is situational, it is fast and can help you deal with Tumblr enemies. Potentially, we'll have to see about that. Uh, he does come with a specific dragon wear, so basically you're not running him as a leader. So let's see, just stats, stats, stats. So I mean, having extra stats is always good, so why not? Just go for his dragon wear. Uh, official brief introduction. Okay, cool. Uh, rewards are, yeah. Collaboration only Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand. And we also have a tournament of duels. Uh, Bloodbath in the Deep Sea. Nice. And we have a CD7 active skill for Wanda. Restore crack positions. In the columns below, Crystal Octavius. Oh, okay. Uh, more Crystal Octavius. Turn Earth and Heart runes into enchanted runes to the leader's race. Okay. I mean, you're an Earth member that's getting rid of Earth and Heart runes, which actually might not be bad because it might it, it will generate... Oh, and Elf. Okay, that's good. So you want to run this in Mono Elf teams to get rid of Crap runes. So that's pretty nice. You generate uh, Enchanted runes of your leader's race. So even if you're running an Earth leader, you will generate more Earth runes, but you're potentially generating Light and Dark, Fire, Water... Uh, runes which is pretty good team attack times 1.6 nice dissolving runes still the first batch will be enchanted heart runes of the leader's race honestly this is not a bad card for a mono elf team cd7 it's okay uh you know it's it's fine for uh restored crack positions crack positions are really annoying uh, that being said, the only good elf leaders we have right now are Daji, which already ignores crack positions herself. But it might be good for future elf leaders, honestly. And Crystal Octavius, there are some good Crystal Octavius cards, but not enough to run a mono Crystal Octavius team. And they're all elf, so you might as well just run a mono elf team. Um, but yeah, the conversion effect is nice and one of the things that I really like about this card is that not only does it have conversion and like board hazard clear, but it also has like some stat boosting effects and guarantee sky drop, which will also add to its effectiveness. So back to the whole role consolidation, this card does a lot, which means that it might it is going to be a good leader or good member for uh, mono elf teams. Just because her skill 
um, is tailored for mono elf teams. Uh, but yeah, so definitely get one for your inventory. We might not need it right now, but you might need it in the future. Uh, but yeah, Whoa, we reached the end. Yay, that just took me forever. Uh, we have been recording for like an hour and a half. Sheesh. Okay, cool. Anyways, so very exciting news this week. Lots and lots of uh, news, especially for the uh, new collaboration. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I do think they, it is a very good collaboration, and I think it is worth pulling for this collaboration. Uh, not only Saitama is powerful, but actually all the Hero Association members, except for Moomin Rider, are really good on him. Um, like, honestly, if you run Saitama, Genos, Tatsumaki, Fuyuki, and King, that's an amazing team, and it's probably going to carry you through a lot of the game because Saitama just punches everything and then the other ones they cover so many of his bases um, that yeah for example yeah Saitama doesn't break initial shield King breaks initial shield Saitama doesn't break equal combo shield uh who was it no not you uh, Fu uh Tatsumaki breaks equal combo shield Genos breaks damage reducing resistance and puzzle shield um and then fuyuki breaks anti runestone shield so basically as long as you run them saitama is invincible with his active skills you can just punch everything so definitely worth going for him especially because since you're going 40 pulls chances are that you're gonna get these non-jackpot cards and even uh, you have a chance of completing the entire seal by pulling these two as well. So honestly, I do think it's a very good collaboration to pull for. But again, if you don't have the diamonds for it, it's okay. Uh, you can save for the next Black Gold card or um, series. But I do think this is a really, really good series to pull for because the jackpot cards have really good active skills that are future proof and they can come into play even in the future when this series falls out of the meta, you can still use the members uh, for other teams, uh, especially like Saitama uh, will be good for any light team going forward because this thing is insane. Uh, Genos also ignores a lot of things with his active skill, so that's also insane. Uh, if you have Pompeii, less of a need so, but he is still pretty good. Uh, for Tatsumaki, Unlimited time tunnel and 30 extra attacks also really good this one he will his true potential Is in this series, but for future water cards. He might be really good king 2.5 attack boost and initial shield breaking for your entire team also really good and also electrify uh, Fuyuki um, Yeah, alter enemies and then herself will deal damage regardless of anti runes of shield and also you benefit the leader by dissolving hard runes and the leader's attribute singly and this is for any leader so she's also really good for any leaders moving forward um and movement rider a but yeah this collaboration seal is actually pretty good so yeah tldr i really recommend pulling for this um collaboration because they're all really good um but yeah I have been talking for so long, um, but yeah, all in all, very cool event, very good cards. Uh, yeah, I am really excited. I really like the anime, and this is going to be really, really, really fun. So yeah, that's all for this week's GNN. Uh, again, let me know if I missed anything. I will be testing these cards when they come out and letting you know my thoughts about them later on. But all in all, I do think this is really cool, uh, really good. It's going to be amazing. But yeah, if I missed anything or if I said anything wrong, uh, make sure to leave me a comment in the comment section uh, telling me what things I missed and I will pin it or make some uh, pin comment out of it. Uh, but yeah, as always, I post Tower of Saviors content regularly on my YouTube channel. I am currently moving countries, so I haven't posted a lot of clears yet because I have been packing 
but I really wanted to get this GNN review video out today. I'm actually driving down to LA and I still haven't finished packing, but yeah, I am. Uh, I will be. I just wanted to get this video out for all of you so you could see my reaction to the new collaboration. Uh, but yeah, I do post Tower of Saviors content on my YouTube channel, so make sure you check that out. And if you have any ideas for future content, let me know. For now, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.